I'm Deborah Hafner, the president of the Religious Institute and an ordained Unitarian Universalist minister. I'm really happy that you've decided to learn more about our Sexually Safer Best Practice program. The Sexually Safer Best Practice program helps congregations develop the policies and procedures they need to protect their congregation from sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and professional sexual misconduct. Let's get started. There are seven steps to becoming a sexually safer best practice congregation. We'll be going over each of them here. Step one is making sure that your board and clergy are committed to working on sexual safety. You might want to bring this issue to a board meeting um, or have individual conversations with the clergy. Their very first step is to make sure that your congregation has a safer congregations committee. It might go by a different name. In a small congregation, it might be a subcommittee of the board itself. But it's important to have a group of people who have the responsibility for looking at, assessing, and implementing the safer congregations policies. In step two, that committee downloads the assessment form on the Sexually Safer Best Practice site and starts comparing your current policies with the 18 criteria of the program, or in the case of a small congregation, 14 criteria. Look and see which criteria you already have in place, and I'm guessing you probably already are doing a number of things that um, are specified. But there are also probably some other areas that need improvement, or perhaps you need to begin new policies in those areas. What I want to assure you is that on the website, you will find examples of the kind of policies you want to implement in your congregation that are considered best practice. There'll be lots of help on the website for you as you start looking at what are the policies and procedures you should have in your congregation. The next step then is to take those areas that need improvement or perhaps the creation of policies and start looking at what policies do you want to put in place. We encourage you to look at the templates. There are people who have already done this work in each of the criteria or perhaps you need to modify it for, for your own um, congregation. After you've done that, then what you want to do is submit a written policy to your board and your clergy person to make sure that they're on board. Step four, which actually should be going on as soon as you begin committing to this effort, is to educate your congregation about sexual abuse prevention, sexual harassment, and misconduct prevention. It will be important for you to help the congregation understand why this work is so important. And there's information on the website that will help you with that as well. Once the new policies are being created, make sure that the congregation knows about them. And then after they're passed by your board, make sure that they're posted and announced. It's very important that people in the congregation, um, including new members, know that you are committed to being a sexually safer congregation and what that means. Step five is submitting your application to become a sexually safer best practice congregation. There's an online form on our website. Once your congregation has met three quarters of the criteria, or hopefully more, you fill out the online form, upload your safety policies, and press send. It's as easy as that. We promise at the Religious Institute to review your application within a month. And if it meets the criteria, um, and if your board and clergy person have signed off, we will send you this lovely seal that you can put on your website, in your materials, um, announce in your newsletter, and let everyone know that you are now a sexually safer best practice congregation. Step six is really about celebrating that you have met this designation. Um, take the seal, put it on your website, put information about the policy on your website, in your newsletter, in your new membership materials, and let everybody in the congregation know that you are now a sexually safer best practice congregation. Step seven is just keep this work going. Um, it's important that sexually safer best practice congregations understand that this is not a one-time process. It's not a policy you write and put in a file, but it's about an ongoing commitment in your community to being sexually safer. We hope this roadmap has been helpful to you 
as your congregation starts working to become recognized as a sexually safer best practice program. We have information, templates, background materials on our website that will be very helpful to you. Go to www.religiousinstitute.org backslash safer hyphen congregations. Be sure to contact the person in your region who is the main contact for the Sexually Safer Best Practice Program. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.